Hello from Guanajuato, Mexico. In the back of me is one of these alleyways. They're called Callejones. Uh, the city is full of them, about 1,200 of them. <laughs> I want to speak about Keith Jarrett. I found a video of his quartet uh, at the Berlin Jazz Festival in 1973. Uh, that was the group he had with Dewey Redman and Charlie Hayden and Paul Motion and uh, sometimes Guillermo Franco who happened to provide this video. It's a very exciting uh, quartet. Uh, I caught them uh, a couple of times at Slugs uh, before Slugs closed after Lee Morgan was shot there. I got into Keith when I was in high school. Senior in high school, Charles Lloyd Forest Flower was released. I didn't know Keith Jarrett. Wasn't very well known at that point. Uh, he played with Art Blakey, but uh, he joined Charles Lloyd's quartet in his early 20s. And his solo on Forest Flower just totally blew me away. I, who is that? You know, sometimes that happens. You hear someone and immediately you lock into it. And uh, I mean, that happened with uh, Mike Brecker on Horace Silver's Gregory is here. Uh, you know, when I was coming up and the 60s Coltrane was beyond me. But one time in the late 60s, I uh, had some psilocybin and I heard Love Supreme and boom, that was it. So uh, that happened with Keith in high school, when I was in high school for Forest Flower. And Charles Lloyd was big. The Charles Lloyd Quartet was a very popular group in the uh, mid and late 60s. And I got a chance to hear them in person a bunch of times. Love that music, still do. Uh, I even uh, found my way into a gig, a dressing room at one of their gigs and hung out uh, with the group, although Keith Jarrett was very quiet, didn't say very much. But uh, interestingly, he kind of went from Charles Lloyd to Miles Davis, to the great band with uh, Gary Bartz and Michael Henderson, Jack DeJeanette, M. Tume, Ayerto. I saw them at the Fillmore East, the gig where Chick was still with the band Keith joined. Uh, at that particular gig, the Fillmore East, which is Miles at Fillmore, I went to the Thursday night show. Blew my mind totally. And then Keith stayed with the band. Chick left to form Circle with Dave Holland, Anthony Braxton, and Barry Elchall. And that was the electric side of Keith, which we really didn't get really didn't get a chance to hear too much of. Around that time, he started doing solo gigs. I caught him in a venue called The Kitchen on Mercer Street, in New York and also at a WBAI, the Pacifica radio station. There was a benefit he played at. Loved his solo playing. Then he formed this group, uh, this quartet, which we're going to see here in a second, uh, from the Berlin Jazz Festival. I saw them at Slugs, and the music was very exciting, very organic. Uh, in fact, I took a friend of mine to that gig, somebody who was not into jazz at all, and let me tell you something, he totally locked into the music, really into Keith, and became a jazz fan after that. A year or so after that, Keith did the first solo piano thing uh, that was recorded at the Colon concert. Uh, the story of this is about to come, I understand somebody's making a film out of it. A teenage girl somehow hooked this up, uh, booked Keith to do this concert, but when he got there, the piano was totally fucked up. It was a rehearsal piano. It was out of tune. And he started to play for that, you know, to work out for that night. And he had to stop. He couldn't. He said, I'm not going to do this. And they said, well, unfortunately, that's the only piano we're going to have here. He walked out. He said, I'm not going to do the concert. He sat in the car. This young woman came out to the car crying, please. Somehow she convinced him to do it. The rest is history. That's one of his, his best-selling recordings. And when I, it gave birth to a whole career as a solo pianist. And then he uh, started playing with the Standards Trio with Gary Peacock and Jack DeJeanette, which they did for decades. 
And then sadly, maybe five years ago, six years ago, he had a stroke and it's either his left hand or right hand is incapacitated now. He really can't play, which is a tragedy. Certainly he played for decades, left us some great music, uh, was a um, NEA jazz master. But what could be worse than playing an instrument your whole life and then suddenly can't play anymore? I mean, the same thing happened to Sonny Rollins because uh, I was working with him very closely uh, after his uh, 70th, no, his 80th birthday concert at Beacon Theater. He started to develop breathing problems, which may have stemmed from when he went, he was living in 2001, he was living in a high rise. He had a New York apartment in a high rise, two blocks of the World Trade Center. The day that the planes went in, the towers went down. He went downstairs to check it out. He told me that he breathed in some air. He got really fucked up. He was coughing up black stuff. And then 12 years later, he suddenly developed these breathing problems with he, which he thought came from that. Couldn't play anymore. Thankfully, Sonny's music has uh, survived. We'll be listening to it. These bodies that are just temporary, we eventually drop them, but artists like Keith Jarrett and Sonny Rollins, they'll live forever. As long as humanity is going, I don't know about that. Uh, I'm not gonna speculate on that. I'm not Notre Dame's. Anyway. So here's some uh, some really good Keith Jarrett and his quartet from the Berlin Jazz Festival in 1973.